This morning I got a letter from Brendan from Boston. Brendan is a college student and he's undecided of his major, but he knows he wants to be an investor and he wants to have a, what is it he said, a seven-figure stock portfolio by the time he turns 30. And he asked me, how do, how do you get started? Where, where do you start on this? Well, Brendan, well, first of all, I'd like to say I get a lot of letters like this. And, and the ones that really warm my heart is from mothers and fathers who say, we sit down with our children and we watch your videos so that they have an idea about investing and, and what they should do in the future and how they should manage their financial lives in the future. And that truly warms my heart. Um, that I could be influencing people that way. What I want to say, though, is if you want to learn to invest and if you want to become a, 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 an astute investor, approach it the same way as if you wanted to become a doctor or you wanted to become a plumber or you wanted to become an auto mechanic. I think if you went into those professions, you would educate yourself. You would, you would first come to an understanding of what you're getting involved in, and, and you, would, you would educate yourself. And part of that might be you would go off to college, you'd go off to medical school, you'd do an apprenticeship with a plumber, you'd educate yourself. Well, if you don't educate yourself and you want to become an investor, you're a fool because there are other people who are going to educate themselves and they are going to be more knowledgeable. So, Brendan, the first thing I would say to you, if I could tell you only one thing and then not explain it to you, I, it would be that 79 million baby boomers are going to retire between 2011 and 2035. If I could tell you nothing else, that's what I would tell you. And that should direct your investment career. But let me be a little bit more giving and tell you that they own, in the United States, those 79 million baby boomers own 75% of the assets in, in, in the United States. And that number is good for the world. We are, about, we are entering the largest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind. And that is going to have more influence on what the stock market does and what your potential earning power is than anything else. And how do I know that? I know that because three years ago, I read this book. It is The Accidental Superpower by Peter Zeon. If you want to be involved in stock trading and you're in your 20s and you're in your 30s or if you're in your 50s, you must read this book because it's going to explain to you. In the first chapter, it's going to talk to you about how the United States became the superpower it is. It's going to explain to you the meeting that the Allies had after World War II and how they decided to distribute the power that it, we now live with. It then will take you back to Egypt on the Nile River, and it will tell you the development of mankind. It will explain to you why in the United States, until the, the roughly early 1800s, no city had a di diameter larger than six miles. And you'll learn why that's the case. And you'll be shocked at why that's the case. But then it'll teach you about demographics. And it's going to tell you that the world is made up of a pyramid of people. The first level of that pyramid is zero to 20. That's your age. At that point in your life, you're nothing but a dependent. You're a drain on society. You have to be fed. You have to be clothed. You have to be educated. As you move up from 20 to 40, you have now become a consumer. You consume everything. 
you will get married, you buy, you, you, you have children, you buy diapers, you buy formula, you buy everything. When you be, go the next 20 years, you become a saver. You've reached the peak earning power of your life and you start saving for retirement. And then through that, and that's what feeds the government taxes. That's what feeds the stock market investments. And then you turn 60 and you again become a drain on society because now you start getting sick and you start taking Social Security and you start accessing your Medicare and you become a drain on society until you die. That's demographics. That all works when the pyramid is properly structured. But the reality is, in many countries, it's not. I have told you about China and their one-child policy and how they have no workers. I have told you about uh, Japan, who did the same thing, and they have no workers, and they have put all their they, they are building their factories for their new ideas in Africa in order to grow their economy. Then you will learn about geography. Why is it important that the United States is surrounded on three sides by water? Because it makes it very difficult to invade us. Whereas Poland was, tra was right adjacent to Germany and Germany had no trouble going and invading them. As Russia is getting into a situation where they're, they don't have any men to work, they don't have but one seaport, they are a real threat to take over the Baltic states. You will learn that in this book, and that will guide you into your investments, what you want to invest in. You will understand the world you live in. About three years ago, when I was reading this book, I was in uh, the Rotary, and I went to Seth, and Seth was a middle manager with Regents Bank, and I said to Seth, do you want to become president of Regents Bank? And he laughed at me and said, sure, I'd love to become president. I said, read this book. You'll be the only person in that building that knows what's going to happen tomorrow, and you will become president of the bank. That was in July, three years ago. We had then a Christmas party in December, and I said, Seth, did you read the book? He said, no, haven't had time to. Seth will never be president of Regents Bank because he didn't have time to educate himself. Okay, once you read that book, then it's very imperative that you read this book. Brandon, you must read this book. This book will tell you about how, where we are today and how nine companies in the world, the big nine, own all the data of the world. Because when you first Googled something on Google or posted something on Facebook, they started collecting your data. This is the oil. This is the gold of the past. If you understand this, you will be a good investor. You'll know who you have to invest in, and you'll understand where the world is going. But with that understanding, what you now need is a window into the future and say, okay, how is that big data going to change the world that I live in? And that's when you read this book. The world, the future is faster than you think. And this will open the window into what's happening next. If you will read these through three books, Brandon, you don't need to go to class. But I'm going to encourage you to go to class because there is more to investing than that. There's quantitative investing. There's technical investing. I personally don't have any need for that because I know what the world's going to look like in 10 years, and 99% of you don't. And thus, therefore, I have an advantage over you in investing. I have a calming nature over me because I know what the automobile industry is going to look like in 10 years. I know. I, I, I know that we're going to have flying cars. I know that genome therapy is going to take cancer out of my genome and so that my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren will not die of cancer. I know these things because I understand the world that I live in 
I understand who has the data, and I understand what it's going to look like in 10 years. Do I then thus need to understand graphs and charts only to, only to give me peace of mind? Only when the market goes down and, and I can go back and look at a graph and say, it's done that before. Amazon has sunk before. It sunk just last March, but it came back. It sunk back in 2008, but it came back. That's all it that that uh, that's all that really means to me. So Brandon, just educate yourself. Then the next step is how do you trade? Well, that you can learn on the internet. You there are there I don't need to tell you how to do that. You can find YouTube channels that will explain to you uh, the difference between T D Ameritrade and and Robin Hood and Webull and E Trade and, and you can find where you are comfortable. Now I want to also emphasize that there is something going on right now that you need to be aware of. And I just stumbled upon this this morning, and that is that E-Trade has had more new accounts opened in this part of the year, that's the first part of this year, the first six months of the year, than they have in the preceding six years. They've had more new accounts in the first six months of this year than they have had in the preceding six years. That means that the generation that is larger than the baby boomer generation, that's the millennials, are coming into the market. And they're entering through places like Robinhood and Webull. And these are some of the new generation uh, investment houses. And one of the advantages they are offering to young people is the ability to buy, to buy fractional shares. I don't know a whole lot about that. I've never bought a fractional share, but that's something you need to learn about. Then I, I went to uh, Robin Hood's website, and they had the stocks of which they are selling the most of. And I want you to see this. I want you to see what the number one stock at Robinhood is. It's Ford. Yes, it's Ford. What is the second one? It's General Electric. What that is telling me is you young people are coming into this market and say, I recognize that name. I know what a Ford is. My mother drives one. I'm going to buy that because the stock's only $7 a share. Well, it's $7 a share because that's what it's worth. That's exactly what it's worth. And it's going to be worth less because what, what do they call them now? ICE, internal combustion engines. What an acronym. They're going out of style. They're going to be replaced. And that's what Ford sells. Now, I just read somebody said, yeah, but Ford has the number one pickup truck. It ain't going to be that way. Do you know what the number one feature was on the new 150 pickup truck that they just introduced? An onboard generator. Okay. What about an electric engine? What about a software system that drives the, the vehicle itself? Where are you at with that, Ford? No, I know where you're at. You're, you're, you're buying a small startup hoping to play catch up. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. General Electric. Why is General Electric down to $7.50 a share? Last time I remember it, I think it was at $75 a share. Why is it at 10% of its value? Because General Electric is dead. It's just too big to bury. Why? Well, Kerry, how could that be? Well, what do they make? They make jet engines. How's the jet business going these days? They, they do make uh, MRIs, uh, our MRI machines, the thing that looks into your body. But they also were one of the largest distributors of health insurance, not, not uh, long-term care insurance. And they missold it. They, they mismanaged their financial business. That my uncle Fred made more money as a retiree at General Electric than he did as an employee of 
General Electric. They are burdened with a union contract. It's just like then the, one of the next number one stocks was American Airlines. I know why that's number one of the Robin Hood top stocks. The price is cheap. But look on the runways of all the airplanes that are sitting there. What is going to happen there? Are they going to come back to what they used to be? Well, even if they did, they're going to be dragging a, a sled full of debt behind them. No, that's not a part of the future. That they're going to, short term, they're going to be replaced by flying cars. And they'll probably be flown by Uber. Read the book. Understand what's happening in the future, and you'll fit into it. Now then, as a new investor, you've read the book, How Do You Get, you, you, you've settled with a, 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 a brokerage firm, uh, it, Robinhood, Webull, um, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, whatever it might be. How do you how do you make your first investment? Well, you choose the company that you think, from your readings, has a future. And the first thing I would suggest you do is you find out who the CEO is, and then you go and you find anything you can about the CEO. And you go to YouTube and you find interviews with the CEO and you learn how he runs his company, it, particularly if he is the founder of the company. If his name is Jeff Bezos, if his name is Jack Dorsey, if his name is Bill Gates, you find out how, what his theory and what his ex expectations are. Then you go and you Google let's say it's Amazon.com, annual report. And you get a copy of their annual report and you read it. If you're going to put your money into the company, you read their annual report. So you know what business they're in, and then you can make a decision if that's a business you want to be in. Because truly, you are going to become part owner of that company. So if you're going to, if you were buying into a restaurant in your community, would you go visit the restaurant? Would you go talk to the chef? Would you go talk to the owner? Would you talk to the employees? Of course you would. So why wouldn't you do the same thing if you're going to invest in Amazon or Google or Facebook? Why wouldn't you want to know everything you could know about them and research them before you even buy a fractional of a share? That's investing. That's not trying to look at a chart and figure out what is going to bump up and go in and out. I am not a trader. I am certainly not a day trader. I think day trading, there's only one way you can lose money faster than day trading, and that's playing the slot machines at um, Las Vegas or whatever casino is near you. Uh, please don't go that route because you, you, you are now gambling. You are playing a game of chance. And maybe you can be smart and maybe you can make money. But when that sucker turns on you, when that algorithm that is run by a $50 million computer says, we're going after you, Carrie, they'll take it from you. They'll reach in your pocket and they'll take your money. But if you know something they don't know, you know what the future is going to look like, and you know who owns the data, and you know how we got there here and where we're going. You know something they don't know because e, that computer didn't, that algorithm, that artificial intelligence may or may not have read this book. So you've got an advantage of them. So as a beginner, that's what you need to do. Okay, you're now educated, you got a brokerage account, you own some companies, now what do you have to deal with? You got to deal with this. This is where you separate logic from emotion. Because your unwanted roommate, and, and, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, an unwanted roommate, this is the book that you now need to read. This is the book that I wrote, that I tell you how I identified my unwanted unwanted roommate and how I evicted them and replaced them with my coach, 
with my best friend and with my biggest supporter. That's uh, who are you? Why are why you are you? It, it, all, all of these books are in the description below. Buy them, read them, and then go forward. So, okay, now we have, we have our strategy put together. We know the companies we want to own. We do some dollar cost averaging, and we take control of our mind. Because the market is going to go up, and then the market is going to go down. And fear will step in and say to you, I got to get out. I got to get out and because uh, the market's going down. And then greed steps in and says, I got to get out and catch this $5 drop and then buy back in. Catch that falling knife. I dare you. Catch it. You're going to cut your hand real bad 99% of the time. Don't do it. You've already made a plan. Brandon, you know where you're going. And then you're now you just stick with the plan. Now, that's how you make money in the stock market. But if you really want to get rich, you take the knowledge you got back here in about demographics. And you recognize that a lot of wealth is changing hands from these baby boomers. Kerry said they own 70% of the wealth. That, that means they not only own 75% of the stock market, they also own 75% of the small businesses. Go to someone who's in their late 50s, early 60s, who owns a small business, and ask them a simple question. Do you have an exit strategy? And they're going to say, what do you mean an exit strategy? Well, you spent the last 40 years building this business and creating it. How are you going to get out of it when you want to retire? Are your children going to step in and take it over? If they say yes, he's a good for you. But you're going to find 50% of the people are going to look at you puzzled and say, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. Hmm. You can tell them how to get out of it. You can become a business broker. You can go find them a buyer. Let me give you an example. I have an acquaintance, Mike. Mike is an, a lawyer. He's 63 years old. I had talked to him about this for about a year. Mike, do you have an exit strategy? Yeah, no, my, my kids don't want to be involved in it, but I'm okay. I'm do Mike had a stroke. And Mike's wife came to me and said, I heard you talking about to Mike about selling his business. He's ready. Find him a buyer. Guess what? All I had to do was make two phone calls. Now, what, is that, what, what does that look like? Well, Mike's, Mike runs a, a, a very sizable legal firm. And it'll probably sell for somewhere in the neighborhood of Four to five million dollars. In the business selling business, the standard commission is 10%. You heard me right. The standard commission is 10%. Now, I might have to split that with the buyer, or I might be getting it all. Or I might say, Mike, that just isn't fair. It isn't fair for me to pick up $400,000 for just making a phone call and bringing you two together and making this happen because I do want it to be fair. But is there a business opportunity there? Yeah, there is. And how did I know this business opportunity? Because I educated myself. That's how I sold my business. Then I told you that I'm a real estate agent. And so I came again across a couple of guys who... Uh, or having difficulty selling their lots. And I said, why don't I uh, do a drone shot of this? And why don't I uh, create some videos about it? And why don't I sell these lots for you? Because you're all professionals and you don't have time to do it. I'll take over the development of it. You already put in the roads and I'll, prob I'll sell four houses there this year. That's another means of income. And then I got this thing, this YouTube channel. I had no idea what this was going to turn into. I had no idea. 
I didn't realize. I realized that that there was advertising adjacent to to videos that I watched, and I suspected that Google shared those advertising dollars with the guy who's who's putting out the the video. And then when I heard that it's a kind of a 55-45 split, okay. And then when I heard that that uh, you make somewhere in the neighborhood of a fraction of a cent, okay. But then I learned that because I'm talking to people like you, I make 1.5 cents. Well, that isn't a whole lot if there's 10,000 views. But at a million, at a million views a month, we're talking about some serious money. And that's what this turns into. So I make money on my portfolio. I make money in real estate. I'm going to make some money selling a business. And I'm, I'm in the di- digital community. I'm in the digital economy through YouTube. So what would motivate me to go to work for somebody? What would motivate me to go check into a nine to five job. Now, is some of this beyond my capability? You bet it is. It's way beyond my capability. But guess what? Some of you have raised your hand and said, Kerry, we'd like to help you. Sam and Alex has come and said, Kerry, we need to reach out through other social media channels. And so you're going to see that I'm now on um, Instagram. I now have a Twitter feed. And I'm changing and developing my um, Facebook page. And then Drew has come and helped me create the Discord. And so what I'm doing is I'm giving other people opportunities through my good fortune. I'm creating something very unique on YouTube. Unlike some of the talking heads on YouTube, who have a million, two million followers, who I have written and said, hey, why don't we collaborate and you can help me and I can share with you my knowledge and you can have a a different perspective. How many of them do you think wrote me back and said, yeah, that's a good idea, Carrie. We'd be happy to help you. How many do you think wrote, wrote back and even said, go to hell? Where I'm not interested in helping you. None. None. Think about this. How much does Google charge you to search? How much does Facebook charge you to post? Do you think I'm on to something? This is how you make money. This is how you make money in the stock market. This is how you make money in real estate. This is money how you make how you make money in business. And this is how you make money in the digital economy. You give it away. You help other people. And the rewards will come back to you. If, okay, I told you the most important thing that I would tell you is that 79 million baby boomers are retiring between 2011 and 2035, the second most important thing is this is a digital economy and find a way to give away what you've got.